So, we, we know Flutter is uh, used for mobile app development, it's, uh, has desktop app uh, support as well, and uh, they have improved the web app uh, support now. Let's uh, go through how we can do it, or oh, uh, how the Flutter is useful for developing web apps. So yeah, uh, starting with a quick introduction. So I am Nikhil. I work as a mobile engineer here at ThoughtWorks. So I've been here working on Flutter, Flutter for web, and doing some DevOps recently as well. So over to you, Rajendra. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Rajendra Satpuri, joining from Pune office. I am a full stack developer. Uh, been in ThoughtWorks for more than two years now. So uh, for uh, this session, Rajendra will, be, will go through what is uh, Flutter for web. A quick demo on Dart to JS, uh, which uh, Flutter uses. Then, what are the renders uh, for, uh, in Flutter? The accessibility and performance aspects uh, of the web app uh, while we are developing the web apps uh, with Flutter. Then, what are the benefits and the lookouts? Uh, when to use uh, Flutter for uh, Flutter on web and uh, the future of Flutter? Cool. So, starting with a basic introduction of Flutter. So, I think. All of you might be aware now, Flutter has been around for quite some time. So mostly everyone might have heard Flutter's capabilities as a front-end framework on the mobile side. Uh, and you might be also curious to, so, because Flutter and Google, they sell it as a cross-platform, multi-platform framework. So it's very important that we also take care of the website and desktop app as well. So I think what they are trying to sell in the last one year from the website is like, its capabilities on running on different platforms at the same frame rate and giving the same performance that they have been famous for on mobile. So the changes that they have made over the past few, like couple of years on the website has been really instrumental and in Flutter moving from a only mobile only framework to a cross platform framework that can be readily used in production websites. Yeah, so uh, just to give a quick introduction of how Flutter works on the web. So, uh, so like, let's suppose you have a simple Dart <laughs> application that you're running on mobile and you want to make it run on the web. So internally Flutter uses Dart to JS. It's their own compiler that basically compiles all of your Dart code to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And this is done at a very fast pace. So you'll be not be able to tell a difference as well. At the same side, like at, at the same time, you can create a lot of reusable components. So if you're already using Flutter on mobile side, uh, you can almost use 80 to 90% of your same code base on the web. So the core logic that remains the same, even the component from the widget side, like the UI components, most of them can be used on the website. Like obviously the real estate would be different on web, but with like minor optimizations, you can easily use them on the web as well. So let's have a quick demo on uh, how Dart converts uh, uh, Dart files into JS. Now let's say we have a simple regulated program. We just add two numbers. Now, uh, if we have to run this program, we have this uh, uh, Dart command, Dart, and the Dart file. Now, if we want to compile this into JS, this Dart uh, compile command, Dart compile JS. Uh, Rajendra, could you zoom it a bit, like the font? Yeah. Uh, is it better? Yeah, much better. And more, if you could do it. Uh, can you do a little more, please? Uh, maybe a couple of pixels more. Can you, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. No, just, just give me one. 20 should be good. Okay. Alright. Yep. So, uh, if, if you want to compile the Dart file into JS file, then uh, Dart gives us command Dart compile JS. Uh, this is the input uh, uh, Dart file that you want, uh, and the output JS. Now, once this is done, I can just run calculator.js and it gives the same output as the Dart file. Now, the same Dart to JS compiler is used by Flutter to build the web app. Now moving on. Yeah, 
So as what we just saw was a quick demo of how Dart to JS works. So it was a simple node command that was basically giving an output in JS, and the same was being done by Dart when it converted the same code to JS. So now moving on, uh, we'll talk about a bit of Flutter web renderers and WebAssembly support. So how web rendering actually works and what kind of renderers Flutter gives us is something that we'll be talking about now. Uh, so there are uh, by default a couple of renderers that Flutter ships with. So they are HTML renderer and a canvas kit renderer. So there are like a couple of major differences between them and it's very important to choose the right renderer right at the very beginning. Uh, so this is because uh, by default Flutter comes with canvas kit as a default renderer and canvas kit is one bulky, bulky renderer. So it takes quite a lot of time to load. It takes and the performance is very optimal. So you'll not notice a visual difference between a app running with Flutter in production using Canvas Kit, or maybe I'll, if I compare it with maybe React app, you'll not notice a visual difference. But at the same time, if you're using something like HTML renderer, you can see visual differences, but the performance would be very fast. So HTML renderer is really lightweight. And although it does impact a lot of on the performance side, like the UI might not be consistent, with what you might be expecting. While in Canvas Kit, they are trying to optimize it to a level that production apps, production websites, they are readily usable in a state where you don't feel a noticeable difference. So we'll quickly go through a short demo of how both the renderers work. So, yeah. Yeah, um, to run Flutter on web, we have this uh, Flutter run command, but with this, we can also pass the renderer as a parameter, like a uh, web renderer, HTML, let's say. Now, uh, we have a simple form here, and we, uh, we can run this app on web with HTML renderer. So, let it build. So, it's just two commands basically that are being used by Rajendra to build uh, like the app, production app, using uh, for different renderers, using different renderers. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, copy this URL here uh, so that we will use it after for uh, the visual difference. Now, once I'm starting, uh, the page is loaded. Now you can see the download size for the complete web app is 3.55 MB. Now I'll just go back, stop this, and render with Canvas Kit now. And we'll see the visual difference and uh, the bundle difference between both of those. So this is just a basic app that has been taking 3.5 MB. So imagine if you have a lot of other things that are happening, this might be even more. Yeah. Okay. Now you see the transfer was 6.38 MB for Canvas Kit. And significantly higher than the HTML render, right? Uh, so the significant difference is the canvas kit dot webassembly, right? Now, uh, if we want to see that easily as well, like uh, in the inspector, everything is rendered through canvas in the canvas kit, but on the HTML. So we have different different components for each of these uh, 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 individual canvases for each of these components. Now it follows a particular structure. Let me show you one of these. Okay, maybe I'll go here with this login. You, you, you can see that there are multiple tags now here in the HTML renderer. Okay, and inside this as well, it uses canvas. So uh, it splits the same page into uh, the starter HTML tags. Again, the visual difference between these two, if you focus on the uh, page, let me focus. Uh, uh, Rajinder, maybe could you close the, the inspector? Sorry. Uh, Could sorry, you close the inspector? Could you close the inspector, please? So I think it's more visual. Yeah. Okay. So if you see the visual difference between these two, 
Now, uh, see the difference between this please login to continue font. You can focus there. Uh, the font style in Canvas Kit, this is uh, very proper. And in the HTML renderer, it looks kind of fat. So there is a visual difference as well uh, compared to like uh, HTML uh, renderer compared to the Canvas Kit. So always uh, with HTML renderer, it's in, in my experience, it's always been a fight with uh, like the design team to check why this is here and why this is not. So in development, especially when you're developing it, uh, you might be using Canvas Kit locally, uh, but when in the release mode, you might be using HTML renderers. So it's a, always a fight going on with design team because in development it was this and in release it was this. So it's very important to choose an optimal solution. So one th thing that Flutter provides is setting it as an auto. So what auto does is like whenever your app is being used on a mobile device with a low latency network. So they'll auto automatically start using HTML renderer in that case. But when a suppose a user is using your website and in an optimal environment, it will be shipped with Canvas Kit by default. So Flutter is like smart enough to identify the network condition and the overall latency that your app might be facing to choose the right renderer in those instances. So uh, next topic is accessibility. Uh, in the very initial introduction, we saw that uh, we shouldn't uh, give accessibility as an afterthought. Right now, uh, when we are considering accessibility, Flutter uses semantics to uh, show the access accessible components of the web app. Now uh, I'll just run this app. Also, so Flutter in terms of accessibility ships with a lot of widgets that add accessibility support uh, to your Flutter apps, especially on the web. So when you're using screen readers or accessibility controls, which Rajendra will be demoing, it's really useful for in those scenarios. So uh, we have this app running. Now, if, if we want to select any component here, we won't be able to do that easily. Now, here, uh, I kind of lost uh, the accessibility uh, button. Yeah. Just give me one minute. Huh? I'll zoom in again. Okay. So by default, Flutter says, okay, enable accessibility. So uh, first thing we need to do is to uh, enable the semantics. And when the app reloads, we will be able to select individual components. But again, now you see uh, it, it is focusing both logo and text combined. right? But these are two different components. One is image and one is text. Uh, so in Flutter, the widget tree is uh, different than the semantic tree. We can define the semantic tree in Flutter as per our requirement. Now, uh, if it's if we think that okay, this is just an information, we want to uh, combine it into one semantic, then we can do that. And visually, how we can uh, identify this is. Uh, again, uh, we can enable, enable that semantics debugger. And once we enable the semantics debugger, we will be able to see what, what all accessibility components are there. And this is very much useful for us in automation testing as well. You can see all the components, uh, uh, check its names, all those things. Okay. So this is about the accessibility. So moving on, so now that we have like a little idea of how Flutter app generally renders and works, it's very important to also know how we can improve the performance of these web apps. Because whenever you're running in a production environment, some things will get shipped by default de using default settings. So what can we do to enhance the performance when using the release mode of a Flutter app? So first thing is like making the right choices. So right at the very beginning, uh, it's important to set the right renderers like we already talked about. 
uh, because by default it will be set as canvas kit. So it's very important to set that as auto. Uh, and as we already saw in some of the demos, the preloading on a Flutter app takes a lot of toll. So it's like almost two, three, three seconds of load time. So there are a, quite a few techniques that you can use to minimize that load time, especially uh, on device caching and loading your assets in a way that it renders before your even app is loaded. So that things really make the Flutter app in production really fast. Because right now, if you see, if you run a basic Flutter app, it should take around five to six seconds to load initially. So in this case, most of our users will have a tendency to drop off. They might think the app is really slow or the website is really slow. So having the, making the right choices right at the very beginning is really important. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. So, so these so are some of the metrics. The yeah. Yeah. Rajendra. Uh, Nikhil, do you want to go on to uh, the previous slide or this slide is okay? Uh, this slide, please. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, this slide is okay. So I was just explaining the metrics of the Flutter web performance. Uh, so before th Flutter 3.0, this was uh, almost at 35 FPS. And with improvement of, like with the Flutter 3 release la last year and enhancements over, over time since then, this has been made at least 39 FPS on Windows platforms, which is a 11% increase uh, compared to uh, Mac OS. This has been made to at least 58 FPS on par. So right now with 3.9 release, it's almost at 60 FPS consistently. So what FPS in this sense means like how many frames are rendered per second on your device whenever you're running a Flutter app. So on app, on Mac OS especially, this is very optimal right now. Uh, on Linux, it's the least optimal, but not a huge difference compared to Windows. So, but there has been a huge increase, almost 18% for Linux as well. Okay, uh, so uh, let's move on to benefits and lookouts. So uh, before we see the benefits, uh, Flutter had 2.10 version as well, and recently released 3 version. Uh, that is 3.9 or so. So before three, uh, support did not have the URL uh, support. Let's say I, uh, it's like a web app, right? Uh, you click on something, you go on to the next page, but the URL uh, won't change. Now, if you want to go back to the login page, there's no slash login. You enter the slash login and go back to the previous page. That support was not there. Okay. Uh, again, it, it was channel render. Uh, search engines were not able to scan through the text, and that's why it was not very uh, search engine optimization uh, friendly. Uh, performance was sluggish, slow start of time because we see uh, on the canvas kit, uh, it, it took more time, the bundle size is more, and the initial load time is also higher. Also, uh, we saw that we are not able to uh, inspect the elements properly here, as you can see. If you want to inspect anything, we are, uh, we are not able to inspect anything. Uh, we, after Flutter 3, now we have uh, support for routing. There are multiple libraries like GoRouter or AutoRouter. As per the choices, as per the use cases, we can choose one of the uh, router. Again, uh, Flutter in itself supports uh, the uh, responsive uh, nature. May that be on uh, different uh, sizes of mobile devices, the desktop apps, or on the web as well. Different sizes of uh, web pages, it supports the responsiveness. There is a significant improve, uh, improvement in performance as uh, uh, Nikhil was sharing the comparison table between Windows, Mac, Linux. There was a significant performance improvement. The SEO is still not great, but uh, Flutter is improving on these areas. So some of the benefits of using Flutter in its current state on the web. So we talked a bit about Flutter and its lookouts, like what are, what is currently not good at and what is currently it is good at. So one of the most important features from dev productivity is the uh, expressive UI and high performance. So especially whenever you're building a production ready app, the main thing that your users want is high performance. So I think in that sense, Flutter has made a tremendous strides in the last couple of years. It is highly performant right now, especially when you're running multi-page applications. 
it is really good and the way it renders it's like not a lot of difference if you compare it with native frameworks then uh, the hot reloading feature that we already talked about i think this is very underrated especially when you're coming from different uh, streams of work right this hot reloading and quick feedback helps the developer productivity increase by thresholds because we have seen that and we have already experienced that and quick feedback is really important as a developer when you are developing something so i think flutter clearly wins here especially on the web as well uh then if i would like you can use native html css javascript even for some like plugins which are not directly available for web uh, so let me take a quick example so in our case uh, we are shipping payment solutions and in that case uh, stripe did not have a sdk that was av available for web but they did have a sdk for javascript so we were quickly able to develop a javascript sdk and call it from the flutter side and this was maybe a couple of days work it wasn't even huge amount of time that we had to spend on building a solution that was only for flutter web so if you have separate teams working on different projects you can use their solution and maybe till you develop something in flutter you can depend on a natively developed solution that is already present so i think that way flutter is extremely flexible and you don't have to have to compromise on a lot of things lot of th like tooling which is not available directly on the web Uh, moving on. Uh, yeah, so Flutter on web versus traditional web frameworks. So at the end of the day, we might talk things, everything like we'll try to sell you everything about Flutter. But at the end of the day, it's a decision that you'll have to sell sell to your stakeholders, right? Like you'll have to convince them why choose a naive technology over something that has been there over ages, like. Eight to ten years, and why go ahead with this? Why not go ahead with this? So that's a huge task that every product manager or CXO you'll have to have a conversation with. So we'll give a quick deep dive on how and what currently performance looks like. So if you compare Flutter with React right now, so if a quick lighthouse check will show you about twenty eight percent more faster. So React is more faster compared to Flutter. So ideally. that will be the case even in future we are expecting that but there are certain use cases that flutter clearly wins and flutter would keep on continuing to win because of the support that they're continuing to add over that so especially on the code sharing side the feedback loop i think flutter is a clear winner because the amount of code you can share on different platforms i think none of the platforms come closer maybe kotlin multi platform is something that is very similar to this but it's still not at the stage that flutter has been doing some things at right now and ideal use case of flutter is not websites it's web apps so we'll talk a bit about how to identify what might be a particular use case for your scenarios so identifying a particular website and a web application so a website might be a simple page where you're loading basic forms user is able to submit data or a landing page for your product flutter is not good at that so it would never be good at that and it will not be in a state for that so it is not meant for that actually but it is extremely good at web applications where there is complex interaction involved where you have users coming in doing something doing some transactions doing some activities or distributing something for your clients so it is extremely good at that especially when you have to prototype quickly present something to your clients present something to your stakeholders i think uh no platform comes as close as flutter in this especially uh if you have a mobile app which is already developed in flutter uh it would be a no brainer to not go with flutter web in that case especially uh, if you are able to compromise on some for performance downsides and those things so coming to uh the future of flutter web how it is looking at and what we might expect in the coming stages Uh, so flutter has promised a further reduction in the bundle size so we were able to see some load size reduction and we the they are promising even more on that front so it will be even faster now then a uh, uh, one more thing that i'm really excited about personally is the embedding flutter in existing html pages so right now it is not possible to embed the embed them directly you have to use a iframe but uh, but in the coming few months they are trying to add support where you can just use them as a inline html element 
uh, and have some complex CSS interactions directly with it. So I think that would be a real game changer. That something that I think as a Flutter community is really excited about as well. Yeah, I think we are almost at the end of it. So if you have any questions from different regions, please. Yes, please. We have one question from Pune. Uh, my question is more related to testing than e to e to e testing. Uh, for example, like someone who is using Cypress. So how Cypress works is like it's a personal selector with their an attitude. Then they do test e by dot get dot whatever class name or uh, testing. So what we do is like we push our code to staging code production. And generally they extract their IDs and classes. And based on that, based on that, the testing team generally select ID classes and we'll do the further like whatever like, testing. So how will like Flutter tackle that situation right, when you don't have that like, unique ID in classes? Yeah. When you are rendering that you are using like uh, uh, HTML render or like canvas script. Okay, uh, the question is uh, when we are uh, doing the automation testing for Flutter apps, uh, let's say we are using Cypress kind of uh, framework which uses the uh, selectors or IDs for CSS and HTML. How uh, can we do automation testing uh, for those web apps? Uh, yeah, so, okay. yeah, I'll take this. So I think directly end-to-end -end testing for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript components is not possible right now in Flutter. I think, and they have already made it very clear. Uh, although end-to-end -end testing on the web platform completely is possible. So if you're interacting with other elements, maybe HTML and CSS elements from Flutter side, uh, that way is not possible, but if you want to just have an end-to-end -end testing for the overall web app, I think that is currently possible. There are a lot of third-party uh, plugins also that help you do that. I, I can actually add to it. So uh, we recently started using the framework, right? Maybe I'm not very sure about end-to-end testing, like for a user comes for a web page, select a product, uh, and check out. Right? These are the these are the user journey tests. Right? Instead of that, uh, I feel this is the visual regression test. Right? So the playwright actually gives you a capability to take a snapshot and compare against that. So that should be possible with any any way you can actually handle us the data Second thing I was recently checking uh, there's a tool called API API I don't know how to pronounce it API. Like, Applet to tools, Apple tools submit. We actually do the visual regression by using uh, AI as well. Something to explore. Something to explore. Playwright has been in the market for quite some time now. So I think that is one very easy possibility. Yeah. Hello. Uh, we have one more question from Hume. So Hello. Uh, uh, yeah. Will... My question is uh, does Flutter handle uh, databases uh, efficiently or not because uh, yeah, people are uh, came to know flutter is a good app or a good good web developer but uh, does it handle the uh, databases efficiently or not uh could you please repeat for me, Rajendra? I think I just missed some of the words. I, I no, this is not the question from Pune side, uh, but I think uh, the question was, does uh, Flutter interact with databases? Is it? Does it interact with databases yeah, yeah. and is efficient enough? That is so efficient in uh, what context? I mean, uh, So I think the question is like how well it interacts with databases and how fast it is at doing that, right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah, that's that's why I'm asking that. that okay. That's the question. Yeah. So uh, I think it depends on what kind of databases you're using and what kind of uh, code you have written. So mostly Flutter would not be directly interacting with your databases as such. It would be your external APIs mostly. But uh, if you want to interact with something like Firebase a database, I think. I, that has native support for Flutter web. So that is really extremely fast and highly performant. So, yeah. Uh, we have next question, question from Pune. Uh, we have Impeller in case right now. So 
I think that's also the UHX issue of iOS. So do we have the, do we have any insights whether or not it will improve the performance of their boards? Uh, the framework, uh, the engine you said? Imperial. Imperial. Uh, so uh, the question is, we have Imperial engine uh, as well. Uh, right. So uh, do we have any insights on performance uh, on that engine? So yeah, okay. Impeller was something that was announced by, in the Google I.O. last couple of months back, and that increases the performance of iOS apps tremendously. But something I think that is not currently available for web, web and they have at least no plans right now to add that for the web. Yeah, so one, uh, question from from... one question from Chennai. One question from Chennai. Hello. Uh, I just have yeah. a doubt on uh, Flutter Web isolates. How to use isolates in Flutter Web? I hope you know about a uh, single thread. Uh, Flutter is based on a single thread for an applications. So we can use isolates to divide uh, UI as well as uh, backend running functions. So how to use isolates in uh, Flutter Web? Uh, so isolates work the same way that they work on uh, mobile platforms. Uh, so you can uh, just spawn a normal isolates like you do on mobile and they take up the same memory uh, on the web as well. Although internally Flutter does take care of handling it differently for each platform because on mobile, it would be in a shared storage on browser. It would be in a browser storage. So those things Flutter is smart enough to identify, but it is possible to use isolates on web as well. Uh, no, uh, isolates is not available for Flutter web till now. So I'm asking you whether any other possible way of using isolates. So, yeah, there are third party plugins that allow you to use isolates on the web. So uh, I think uh, there has been a couple of recent plugins that were released a few months back, which allow isolates to be used on web. Although the functionality might be a bit different compared to mobile, but it is possible now. Is that a library? Yeah, it is an open source library. I might want to check the name again, but it is an open source library. Okay, fine. Thank you.